strange, but true stories. Tales from the light side, the dark side, and the other side. I'm Steve White. You know, we've done lots of stories on this channel about Bigfoot. It seems that each region of the United States has its own version, and of course, all around the world, different cultures have varying names and descriptions of a local creature that lurks in the forest. Today, we travel to eastern Ohio and hear about one man's encounter with the Ohio Grassman. I inherited the family farm when my father passed away, just as he had when his father, my grandfather, died. The family farm, located in a rural part of Ohio, had been in our family for many generations. Despite being raised on this farm and spending the better part of my life here, I always felt uneasy being all alone on the property. I consider myself an outdoorsman. We were either working outside on the daily chores or we would be hunting, fishing, and camping. I left to join the United States Army in my late teens. I was trained and drilled to pay attention to details, details that most would overlook and consider unimportant. I was also taught to never show or feel fear, but what I'm about to tell you changed me more than the combat I was involved in ever did. When I got out of the army, I returned to the farm. My father passed away a few years later. While I was going through my father's belongings, I came across his old shotgun that he hunted with. I figured that as a tribute to him, I would harvest one last white-tailed deer with that shotgun. I went out to scout the area I would be hunting the next day, and as I was doing that, I got this strange, uneasy feeling. It was a feeling that I remembered from my childhood. The hairs on the back of my neck stood on end. I felt as if I was being watched and even followed by something. It was clear to me I was not alone in the woods that day. My blood ran cold at the mere thought of what could possibly be watching me or following me. When I eventually got the nerve to leave, I left the area as quietly as possible. I played it off as something like my mind playing tricks on me. I had been recently diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. Coupling that with the sixth sense all hunters have, and you can understand why I might think it was nothing more than a trick of the mind. I went back to the house and called it a night, looking forward to hunting the following day. The next day, when I went back to the area I had chosen for my hunt, I noticed the woods around me were eerily silent, which was unusual to say the least. These woods were always overflowing with wildlife, but now there were no animals running around. No woodpeckers in the trees, no rabbits running along the forest floor, not even any bugs. But more importantly, no deer. A few hours passed like this. I got comfortable against a tree I had chosen to watch from. After a while, I became overwhelmed with the worst smell I have ever experienced. And then a few minutes later, I saw something odd in the distance. What I saw can only be described as a giant, upright, hairy, humanoid figure. And it was walking towards me. It was about 80 yards away from me. I looked through the scope of my father's shotgun to get a better look at the creature. And what I saw is an image I will never forget. Whatever I was looking at had a human-like face, broad shoulders, and long reddish-brown hair all over its body. The creature had to be at least eight feet tall and its arms hung low, so low that its hands were almost to its knees, and the arms were the size of fence posts. I made the decision to shoot over its head to scare it off. I didn't want it getting too close, so I shot and the creature let out the most blood-curdling yell or howl. It would be hard to describe just what it sounded like, but that noise made my body freeze up. The creature did scamper off into the woods, and I waited for the longest hour of my life before getting up to ensure that the creature was gone. I got my nerve back, I got up and went to investigate the area I had seen the creature come from, and I saw the biggest footprints in my entire life. My father's shotgun has a 28-inch barrel, and these footprints came within a few inches of being as long as the gun barrel is. 
My grandfather and father had told me stories about the Ohio Grassman when I was a child. For those who are unfamiliar with the Grassman legend, they are Ohio's version of Bigfoot, more or less. Growing up, I always thought they were just tales that they would tell me to scare me. Both my father and grandfather always told me that these creatures lived here on this land long before our family did. Whatever I saw that day, I can't say for sure, but I will no longer go to that area of what is now my farm. This happened several years ago. I still live on the farm, and I still get that feeling I'm being watched. I can hear howling at night on occasion, similar to what I heard that day, that I nearly came face to face with one. I've told people about my encounter, but they all say that what I saw has some association to my PTSD. I don't walk through my woods much anymore, and when I have to, I always have a firearm. If you're ever in the backwoods of eastern Ohio or on a hike or camping trip and you get that strange feeling that you're not alone or are being watched, trust your instincts. Because if you take one thing from my experience, let it be this. When you go out into the woods and you think you're all alone, think again. This has been another strange but true story sent to us by a viewer just like you. Tell us what you think in the comments below, and if you have had a strange encounter that you would like to share with us, send it to us in an email to strangebuttruestories2 at gmail.com. Subscribe if you haven't already, and sign up for notifications to know when the next video drops to the channel. Thanks for watching this video. I'm Steve White. Until next time.